What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl that's cool. Let's get into this commentary. Hey homies, listen, I got some news for you. I have an update, okay? Remember I was talking to you guys about the guy in the Bronx who was walking on the platform, saw the lady sitting down in the on the bench, and he smeared poop and stuff all over her face and back. Well, they caught him, okay? His name is Frank Abrokwa. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Well, they did catch him. They caught him Monday. So I'm so happy about that. But let's get into this guy's history because I, I feel as if they don't hold people long enough anymore. You get what I'm saying? They do not hold people long enough. So I'm wondering how long are they going to hold this guy? I'm wondering how long, you know, they're going to hold him. Now, it says here, let's start with this. New York City poop attack perp has over 20 arrests since 1999 and was just released out on bail. He was just released out on bail and again, he's doing something else. The reason why they keep doing these type of things is because they get out. They don't stay long in jail. They don't keep them. So, the guy accused of smearing feces on a woman's face in the Bronx, he has a lengthy rap sheet and was released without bail in, in a separate assault um, case last month. Frank Abroqua, who's 37 years old, has been arrested more than 20 times since 1999, including on February 5th when he allegedly slugged a man in the face at Port Authority bus terminal, according to the cops, and a criminal complaint. The victim felt so much someone punch him, and when he turned around, Frank was the only person in the immediate area, the complaint said. He was charged with third-degree assault, aggravated harassment in the second degree, attempted assault in the third degree, and second-degree aggravated harassment. That was said in the complaint. Frank also punched another victim, a 30-year-old man, multiple times in the head on January 7th at 125th Street. On the sec on the two and three train, well, in the station of the two and three in Harlem, and that's according to the cops and court papers. He was arrested at the scene and charged with third degree assault, third degree attempted assault, and second degree harassment, all according to the complaint. Frank was arraigned in connection to both of those incidents, February sixth, and cut loose on supervised release. Okay, he was cut loose on a supervised release because the charges are not eligible for monetary bail. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office said, wow. Mm. Now, in, well, with the lady, he was also charged. So, he was arrested. When he assaulted the 43-year-old woman, all right, he is charged with forcible touching, menacing, disorderly conduct, and harassment. He was also arrested in connection to the incident on February 28th, 2022. He is scheduled to reappear in court on April 28th. Now, Frank, most recent bus was on february 22nd a day after the vile underground i mean the vile attack underground when he allegedly menaced an employee with a screwdriver during a robbery at a hardware store on white plains road near east 20, 237th street in wakefield now the bronx district attorney's office didn't immediately provide information on Frank's arraignment in that case. He was busted Monday in connection to the February 21st feces attack. This guy, he needs to be put away for good. I mean, he needs to be off these streets because he is not going to stop. After he appeared in court in April, I really do hope they put him in a mental institution or somewhere where he could be locked up because he needs to be off the streets. If he doesn't kill someone next, someone is going to kill him. 
And I'm dead ass serious. Okay? No one should be going through all these attacks and being harassed when they are, you know, people just living their lives in New York City. Let me tell you something. New York City has gotten so bad. It's worse than the 80s. Some of you may agree and some of you may not agree. But those of you who remember what how the 80s was like and now people are just not, not willing to deal with New York City crime and then they get released out of jail and they get back on the streets bothering somebody else. The homeless situation has gotten way out of hand. I don't know how New York City is going to get under control again, but people are going to leave. People are already starting to leave New York City. And it's crazy. New York City, let me tell you something. That's all I know. Okay? I was crazy. That's all I know. It could be a wonderful place. You know? Beautiful place. It's a place where people like to go and visit and hang out, whatever. But the crime, okay, the cost of living is off the chain. You can, I was reading somewhere where they said Target is going to be making 24 hours an hour. That's all fine and dandy, but you got to remember Target is a retail store. They're going to give you hours. I mean, you're not going to come to work Monday through Friday and make that kind of money. You're going to be off a few days. The schedule, you know, they're going to cut hours. So when they say you're going to make this amount of money, it may look good. But after you can pay your bills and you add up your rent and your other bills that you got going on, is it really good? Okay. To really survive in New York City, you got to be a doctor or lawyer or have roommates or some type of high paying job working for transit, something to make sure you can pay your bills. If you're not on any programs like Section 8 and stuff like that. Now, if you're on Section 8, you could probably, you know, get through get by whatever the case may be because you're not paying the full rent but is it worth it to pay all this rent in a place where the crime is off the chain where you don't feel safe on the trains anymore okay is it worth it and yes moving somewhere else is not going to solve the problem because there's crime everywhere but at least some places you can have a peace of mind okay there are just things you don't have to worry about, like taxes. My goodness. That alone is running people out of New York City, the taxes. And then with all these things happening, with these attacks going on, you're scared to even do anything. Oh, man. It's, it's just, you know, something to think about. You know, starting over somewhere else is not going to be easy. But if you do your homework, and you have a job lined up, maybe it may be best for you and your children if you have any. Maybe it may, it may be it's best for you to just try to, you know, relocate somewhere else. I would never tell somebody to stay in New York City and, and they having a hard time surviving. You got to go where your pockets could, could stretch. You get what I'm saying? Your pockets can only stretch so far in New York City. So that piece of crap, Frank Abroqua, he is off the streets for now. But, you know, the truth is, there's so much that this mayor could do right now. He's fresh in. So he has some work on his hands. I just hope that we see some improvement throughout the years as he is mayor. You know, let's see, let's see, let's see something being done. Okay, we want to see something being done. Also, um, they built in a jail in Chinatown. They built in a, a new buildings, a new jail in Chinatown, and they are having a fit over there because they don't want it there. And I don't blame them. You know, nobody wants to live exactly next door to a jail place, but it's not going to stop them. They not they trying to stop it from being built, but it's not working. They're going to keep. They're going to keep building that. You know, they got to keep building that. And then all these fancy luxury apartments and skyscrapers going up. I mean, who's going to be living there? Because a lot of rich people left New York City. When I was reading articles, a lot of them left and went to South Florida. You know, Miami is expensive too now. Don't get me wrong. But it's the taxes. A lot of rich people don't want to pay taxes. 
Hell, poor people don't want to take pay taxes. But we have to work and we have to make ends meet because we don't have that kind of money just to be up and moving around. So we stay where we we stay where we at and we just deal. But my goodness, in a few years, it, New York City is not going to be for the poor. And with this crime going on, it's not going to be for the rich either. All those buildings are going to be left on rented or on board because not bought because they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. But anyway, I just want to let you guys know they did catch the guy that smeared poop on that woman. I know she feels so disgusted right now. I know I hope she goes to the doctor and just takes some tests to make sure, you know, she got to take tests to make sure that she don't have anything he, it, because people are just disgusted. And like someone said in my comment section, the homeless people, not all of them have mental health issues. They are just plain evil. And that is the God's honest truth. You can't go around saying this person has mental health issues when probably they don't have any mental health issues, but they just evil as hell. And, and they just want to bother people. Because you got folks out there like that now. Okay? Let me tell you something. I never forget, I was walking down Jamaica Avenue. And on the corner of Jamaica and Parsons Boulevard, there's a movie theater. You know, if you know the area, you know what I'm talking about. So this man, he's coming out of Dwayne Reed. He asking me, oh, do you have some change that I could put with my money to, to watch a movie? What? You asking me money? So put with the money you got to watch a movie. It's like, what's going on? I was like, no, sir. I don't. If you don't have enough money to watch a movie, maybe you need to skip that movie for right now. I mean, he didn't look like he was bumming or anything like that. So it's like, it's crazy. Then when I was at Port Authority, not Port Authority, Penn Station, this guy, he asked me, you know, he was homeless. Can he borrow $3? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, how the hell he going to give me back $3? And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't carry cash on me at all. I don't carry any cash on me. But it's just, it's, it's exhausting sometimes. Because a lot of it, a lot of people, you know, they just out there on these streets, man. And it's not good. It is not good at all. But anyway, so this is what I want to talk to you guys about. I'm trying to get through my content as fast as I can because I got things that I want to talk to you guys about as well. I've been sharing my stuff on TikTok also. And guess what? I've been getting some views over there, honey. I've been getting more views over there than I do over here. But I'm just trying to get stuff out so you guys know what's going on. Okay. All right. So I will talk to you guys later. Y'all have a good one. I love y'all. Later.